us to the third episode in a series of episodes that are focused on the detailed revision of the 2023 GCE Science in Paper 1. So in the previous two episodes we covered question 1 through 10. So let us now move to question A11. And just in case you are new to this channel, consider subscribing so that every time I upload a video you get to get the notification. And should you find this video to be helpful, consider liking by liking to help my channel to improve its visibility. So question A11, which of the following diagrams show the correct path of lay of white light passing through the grass prism? So in this case we are looking for the collective path of ray of white light. So the key principle that you need to know when looking at path of lay of light which is passing the prism is that the incident layer bends towards the normal when it enters in the prism and while leaving the prism it bends away from the normal so remember the normal is the line which is perpendicular to the surface so that's the normal so if you look at option a if I were to draw a normal, a normal will be somewhere at this point. So, is the ray of light bending towards the normal? No. It's not bending it towards the normal. You see, away when it's entering at this point. So, A cannot be correct. If you look at B, if you draw a normal, a normal will be somewhere at this point, which will be perpendicular at 90 degrees. So, when it's entering, it's bending towards, towards the normal. Then, when it's coming out, this will be somewhere, a normal will be somewhere there which will be 19. It is away from the normal. So you notice that B should be the correct answer. So before even conclude, let us counter check that C and D are incorrect. So if you notice C, C there is no bending away, it's just passing through as if these two medium, this one is denser, this one is less denser, as if they are equal in density so this one is out if you look at option d you need to draw a normal again so if i draw a normal like that you notice is not bending towards the normal when it enters the prism it's bending away so d is incorrect so this is why b is the correct answer question a12 the following diagram shows a transverse wave so we have the displacement, then we have time on the x axis. This is time, then this is the displacement. How many complete waves are shown in the diagram? So the temptation is for someone to just come and check the time, which is six seconds, and say like that, or just count these, 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 and say there are six. That's why there is this 6 which is incorrect. So we need to avoid that. So you need to be careful as you look at this question. Otherwise this is a giveaway question. So the first thing that you need to understand is you need to understand the few things. What is a complete wave? So a complete wave is a movement of a disturbance in a medium that carries energy without a net movement of particles so it, it will include all the points from the same point to another point so if it's from this point to this point this is where the complete wave is so if it's from this point which is the rest position to this point you see that one so you need to count half like that so we have a trough then we have a crest then we have the amplitude like that so we have one then two then three so the correct answer here is b which is in three so take note of the definition of the amplitude the wavelength the crest then also the frequency question a13 the following diagrams show two wave forms which property of sound wave is it different in the two waves so let us see what is different about these two waves so if you look at the first wave 
the first wave has got how many? Wave one, two. There are two. What is the amplitude? The amplitude is in four. So the amplitude in this case is in four. So this is four. What is the amplitude here? The amplitude is in three. The number of waves are all two. Frequency, because the times are the same, so frequency is also the same. So in that case now, the amplitude is what is different. What property of a sound wave is affected by the amplitude? So you see the loudness. So the loudness of a sound is preliminarily determined by the amplitude of the sound wave. Higher amplitude sounding waves are perceived as loud sounds, while low amplitude sound waves are perceived as quiet or low sound. So, in this case, this one is less loud, this one is more loud. So, in this case, it's loudness, which is in B. Just also to take note, other factors that can affect the loudness of sound include the distance of the source from the hearer or the hear, also the surface area of the vibrating body and the density of the medium, and lastly the presence of uh, resonant bodies. Take note of those key other factors. You might be asked to mention other factors that affect the loudness of sound. Question A14, which statement is not true about a magnet? It is always A, attracting magnetic materials near it. This is true. A magnet will always attract magnetic material that are near it. This is due to the magnetic field that is generated by the magnet. When a magnet material enters this field, it experiences a force that pulls it towards a magnet. Hence, A is true. B. Made from a magnetic material. Magnets are always made from a magnetic material. These materials are iron, nickel, and cobalt. Hence, B is also true. Let us look at C. M made up of two opposite poles at its end. Again, this is true. All magnets are made up of two opposite poles at their ends. These are referred to as the North and the South Pole because this is a fundamental property of magnets. Whether it's a small magnet or subatomic particles to the largest, they all have a North and South Pole. So C is also correct. D resting in the North-South direction when suspended free. Though this statement might be true, but it's not completely true. This is because, while it is true that a free suspended magnet will align itself with the Earth's magnetic field, which generally lands from the geographic North Pole to the South Pole, this does not mean that the magnet will always rest in this direction. If other magnetic or electromagnetic fields are present, this may not always be the case. So the presence of electromagnetic field or other magnetic may not always make this one to be true. So the key is always. So because it's not always the case, D is not true. Question F15. Which diagram collectively represents results obtained when a charged gold leaf electroscope is brought close to a charged metal rod using the method shown. So, we are just bringing it close, not initiating a contact. So, the method is induction. So, we are inducing a charge. So, because it's by induction, we need to use the electrostatic law of charge. So now what will happen is, if we have this neutral charged, then we bring the, let us say, the positive charged. 
So the positive charged will repel the positive charge and attract the negative charge. So let us look at it now the options. So this is positive, positive. So what will happen is because positive, positive, this is supposed to be negative charge. Because positive should attract negative charge, then repel the positive down here. So because of this, A is incorrect. If you look at B, we have the negative charge brought to the positive charge. What will happen is this is going to attract the positive. So this is positive is correct. Then this will leave this side the negative charge. Hence, this got leaf will open up. Hence, B is correct. So, B should be correct answer. If you look at C, if this is negative, this should do have been positive. So, this could not be correct. Then, if you look at C, C, this is positive, this is positive. So, positive would repel positive. So, this side should have been positive, then this side should have been negative. So again, D is cannot be correct, so these are out. So B is the correct answer. So it's that principle that you use to answer this question. So thank you for joining me in this episode. Please join me in the next episode as we look at question 16 through 20.